Um, so Jesus, the Bible says, and with then Jesus said to in verse 10, away with me, Satan, for it's written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. And so my my friends, my brothers and sisters, as we go through these last days, you have to be very, the only way that you're going to survive the spirit of the Antichrist, you must have the word of God. There is no way around it. There is no way that you are going actually not to be deceived. The deceit, the deceitfulness of the enemy is going to actually come from the scriptures. He twists the scriptures. He interprets them according to his purpose. But you need to be a person that understands your Bible. When we say this year that you need to read through your Bible, we were not joking. And I'm so thankful for a few of you that actually mm -hmm. listen and you are reading through. I was watching someone and they are still in the Old Testament, still reading through the, the first five, five books. But at least they are trying. But this is, uh, this is July. If you're going to actually finish your Bible, you need to be somewhere in the middle. You must be somewhere past the Psalms, going to the, great, the, the major prophets. And so... Um, uh, Jesus, Jesus, um, Jesus used the word to dispel every temptation. There is no way you are going to overcome in anything in life apart from the word of God. For man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of, out of the mouth of God. Knowing the word is what will save us. You see, there are people out there who know about the number, and uh, who, are about, who know about the beast and the number, the antichrist, and they're actually waiting that I'm not going to check, take a chip. Most people, that's what they say. I will never take a chip under my skin. I will never take a chip on my arm or even in my face because I know once you take a chip, it will be, uh, it will be the number of the beast. But the, the thing before you get there, have you taken the spirit of this beast the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of the Antichrist. It is the, 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 the Bible, the, the, we think that this, the Antichrist will come and oppose Christ. He will not actually oppose Christ. He will say, I think for me, I personally believe that this guy shall be a little bit godly and many godly people shall believe in him. He will just turn around and manifests himself as a full, uh, as a fullness of wickedness by calling himself God. And you've seen that prophet here in Uganda who says that he's in Christ and therefore is equal with Christ, may be greater than Christ because he came later than Christ. Because the, 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 the boy on the social media that was recent, you've seen that video that has gone viral that everyone is condemning, that the boy was saying, actually, he's in Christ. It's if, even an understatement to say that he's, he is by Christ. He is, he should be above Christ. Because the Bible says, he's in him. He's in him. And so their interpretation is, Christ is too small, so he fits on the inside of you. So because you host him, therefore you are bigger and greater than him. And there is that, those teachings are starting to go, to go around in universities, in, in, in the cities, and in schools. And a lot of people are believing that actually you are God because the Bible, they quote those scriptures. But as I say, the enemy also uses the scriptures, but out of context. If Jesus was not acquainted with his Bible, he would have been deceived, easily deceived. But he knew the Bible and he quote the scriptures to fit and to fight the temptation. There is no way, my brother, my sister, you are going to overcome any temptation if you don't know the scripture to fit in your temptation and to fight your temptation. A lot of people, when they get in, in temptation, they, 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 start saying, they rebuke, they rebuke. Can you imagine Jesus facing the devil and say, Jesus and the devil say, Jesus, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread and eat. And Jesus said, I rebuke you in my name. 
I rebuke you in my name. We you know what he, he would have done that. He could have done that. But he knew that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And the word of God is a pure, is pure, is ever, is the word of God is forever settled in heaven. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's a weapon of our warfare. When you know the Bible, you actually have a, a, a weapon that is above, a weapon that can overcome any devil in hell. It can cut through the every 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 detail. It can cut through every demon and every evil spirit. If you know the word of God, I mean, you need to read Psalms one hundred nineteen. This is a, your word makes me wiser than my teachers. Your word has purified my soul. Your word is pure than honey. Your word is sweeter than anything. The, the word of God is powerful. It's so powerful. But you see what the animals, the, uh, the spirit of the Antichrist has done, has made us uh, like teens. A teen without any substance. You know, we make a lot of noise. You, you, an empty tin makes a lot of noise, and then if you fill it with a substance, you don't hear any sound from that tin. I remember when I was a kid, my my grandfather had one of those, and we used them to 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 measure and and to weigh to weigh dry coffee, even uh, low coffee, but mainly dry coffee. So ngajaja baba tunde mwani babuza David ya meka. Monsa wa mwadimu edebe meka nga batu munda mudebe. Na ye, that edebe, when, if you put it in, in, a, in a living room, and it's empty, and in the night, there's the, 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 the a rat in the house, and it kicks that thing, you all have to wake up. Why? The tin is empty. An empty tin makes a lot of noise. That's why a lot of people that are doing evil things, they actually possessed by the spirit of the antichrist. They are, they make the loudest noise on the radio, on the social media, on TVs, and they shut others down. But let me tell you something: the word of God is that powerful. It's so powerful that is, if you is if it's settled in your spirit, if you store the word of God in your spirit, they can arrest you and try to put the number on your head, on your hand, it will not work. Why? Because the spirit of the Antichrist cannot touch those who are filled with the spirit of God. But the word of God is that powerful. So just the simple act of reading through your Bible on a daily basis puts you in a bigger, powerful, authoritative position in the spiritual realm that when you speak the word of God, when you quote your Bible, you are actually like someone who is throwing it. Every time you speak in a situation and you are like, I feel sick, but in the name of Jesus, it's written in Isaiah 53, verse 1 and 2 and 4 or 5, that he was beaten for my transgression and by his stripes I am healed. I declare healing for Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, in verse 19, that if those who believe in him, these signs shall follow them. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall get well. I'm laying my hand on my body. I'm healed in Jesus' name for he is my healer. And you proclaim the word of God. What you do not see in the physical world is that in the spiritual world, either you are actually spitting out fire. You are spitting out these sharp swords that can pierce through, through ligaments. To the, state, to the smallest details, the word of God does that. And so, what's happening in our times? You have Christians who don't even have Bibles, but they can pray. You have Christians who come to church and they can sing in the choir. When I was newly born again, it was a requirement for you to, be in, to, be, to have a Bible so you can join the ministry. In our days, all you have to do is to be present. You don't have to have a Bible. You don't have to have any verse, to know any verse. You don't even have to have read through your Bible to join a ministry. But I'm telling you, when we open up again, I think, and I believe we should go back to the foundations of our faith. 
every minister in Kawempe Worship Center should be acquainted with their Bible. They should be able to teach others. Every believer should be able to disciple at least one or two people who are newly born again by sharing the word of truth with them. And so I'm praying. Those of you that are here on this Zoom tonight, let me the Lord remind you that you need to be a person. Your vocabulary should be, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is, we are going into elective politics right now. You should have a verse for this. I, I already have a verse for these, these political campaigns. Righteousness exalts a nation, a nation, but wickedness will bring it down. A righteous man, if rules and reigns, the city rejoices. But when a wicked man raises everyone, there is misery in the streets. So I have, I have those verses that I'm using to choose who am I going to vote for. I don't vote because this guy is popular. I don't vote because we need the change. I vote because I am following the principles of the word of God. Let me tell you, a, a man who has the word of God in them, they, they are not moved by emotion. They are moved by the word of God because the word of God is the will of God. So I want to end here by telling you the way we are going to overcome the Antichrist is through the scriptures. Just looking for his, the number will not help. If you know your Bible, he will not find you. And you stop moving in fear. Because some of you are already scared a lot of things, or they are going to vaccinate us, or they are going to put in chips, computer chips in our, in our skip, or they are bringing G5 internet connections in, in my area, and they are going to bring all these destructive things. Let me tell you something. The word of God is a fire. It's like a hammer. When you have the word of God, you are too safe to be scared of anything. If the Lord is, a, is for you, who can be against you? So I want to take this last, uh, last five minutes. Um, so we pray together that the Lord will give you the ability and the wisdom to study and to read the word of God. And then from this day forth, may the Lord help you to be a woman and a man of the word that you shall be quoting the word in your conversations to your family, to your friends, your neighbor. You need to be a person that actually wakes up and say to your neighbor, but actually today when I was reading, I read in Numbers 23, 23, and the Bible says there's no sockery against the house of Jacob, and there's no curse against the house of Israel. You need to quote scriptures in your conversations. People quote others. Mwa present yagamba, bobo wa yagambi, musumba yagambi, but Jesus quoted his father's word. So um, I want, I'm going to ask you in the next five minutes, please animate your mic. I'm going to ask you to pray for yourself that the Lord, number one, will forgive you for minimizing his word. May the Lord have mercy on you for not be taking his word as number one in your life. May this day be a day for you to make a covenant with your Bible that I'm going to read you from Genesis to Genesis. Come on, let's raise our voices and pray together.